We're going to work our CS on YouTube. So <laughs> say hi to Becky. She's awesome. <laughs> uh, I'm excited about our show that we're going to have. A, I, I've been thinking about things that we can talk about. For <laughs> That's awesome. I can't wait. <laughs> Alrighty. There's been a couple of people said they have to watch the replay, which is fine. I always get that too, which is really nice. So I always got to remember to say, hey, welcome, you know, hey, we replayers or whatever, you know. <clears throat> okay, go for it. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. chat live show welcome welcome i am so excited because we've been off since thanksgiving and so we haven't what it's been four weeks i have this show every other week so i just want to welcome you guys i see becky's here any of you guys that jump on go in the chat say hello where you're from and it's going to be a blast. I got a great show ready. I have AD in the background and we are on time. And guess what? We are like, we had to stream once. We didn't have to go back and stream. We were, the past couple of shows have been so, I mean, it's been so crazy, but it's funny because this is a live show and I don't cut or anything like that. What you see happens. I have dogs, I have babies, we have technical problems, but it's all about macro photography, micro photography, and close-up photography. So again, thank you so much. Hey, it's so awesome to really have chatters out there. So before we really dive into the show, I just want to do a real quick promo and then we'll really get into it. Today's macro photography live chat show is brought to you by Adventurers of the F-Stop, a $29 monthly membership to elevate your macro and landscape photography and business skills. Just go to membership.sullivanjphotography.com and check out all the details to push your creations in 2018. Okay, some of you guys might not even know who I am, so I figured I better say who I am. So I'm Janice Sullivan, and I own SullivanJPhotography.com, and that membership that you just saw is mine. It's mine and my daughter's, and we really do love to work with macro and landscape photographers, so definitely check that out. So uh, this show is definitely all about uh, close-up photography, macro photography, and micro photography. And today, we are really getting into some real fun creativity stuff, and it's the holidays, so I have a great equipment segment that I'm just going to be sharing tons of stuff for you and for me, <laughs> some of the stuff I have and some of the stuff I want. <laughs> but I want to let you know that this show is every other Thursday, and it's at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So our next show is going to be December 20th, and it's going to be our Christmas special. And AD is going to be with me live on the show. We're going to be all Christmas out. It's going to be so much fun. Now, I do have a little mug today, but truthfully, it's going to be way, it's going to be so much fun. And I actually would love for you guys, because we do have a critique section in the show. And I would love for you guys to start photographing holiday macro close up and micro stuff and submit your goodies for the critique area that we have on the show. I would love to see it. it would bring everybody in the spirit and to see some fun macro photography. And I'll, uh, we have two different ways to, for you guys to share your information or if you have questions or if 
the actual images. And there's one on the Facebook group that we have, and it's down below this video. And then we, if you're not a Facebook person, I get it. I also have a, uh, a checkoff sheet that kind of tells you what you need to do on my website. So you definitely check out sullivanjphotography.com and you can submit your work and questions there too. So yeah, so okay, now this is with me. I have guests a lot, at least once a month I have a guest. So when I'm just with me, when it's just me, little me, then I will chat with you guys in YouTube. So definitely check out the chat there. I do have a, um, I do, the members do, ha I do have an area. Can I spit that one out? I do have an area for the members so I can see their questions too. So if you don't see something in the chat and I'm actually answering a question, that's because it's in the membership program. So Let's talk today. It's about creativity. Oh my gosh. So I get it. I totally get it. There's a professional macro photography group, Facebook group that uh, myself and a couple others run. And one of the things that they have, were saying, it's the winter months and up here in the Northern hemisphere. So some people are getting cold and underneath some people are warming up. And a lot of those photographers in that group like to shoot bugs and flowers and wildlife and stuff like that. So they have been a little flustered. So I thought, well, when I heard, you know, we were, we were chatting it up over there and I thought, well, let's go ahead and give you some inspiration today. Let's think about some creativity and some, um, you know, ways for you to think about what you can do. Now it may not be exactly what you like to do, but it's still good to actually push yourself out of the comfort zone and you will learn new things. And then when you get back to things that you like to photograph, you'll be able to, in your mind, you'll have, whether you think so or not, you may change something up, whether it's in, you know, photographing or post-processing. So what I'm going to do now is I want to switch to my, um, share the screen so this way, I'm going to give you guys some inspiration. And it's not just about me, but I do want to share with you that I wrote a blog post about this. So 10 tips for creatives, and I did a video on it. And um, I, I'm going to share actually images that I think that will help you actually try different things. But I want you to also know that there's once you find something that you like, you really should like play with it for a month. Don't just try it one or two times, really get into it and hone into it and, and try to, you know, get the best images that you can, because if you're trying something new, you're going to get flustered and that's good. That's good to do. You want to push yourself out of that comfort zone and then that creativity comes back. So uh, the, some of the things that I say is grab ideas, you know, go and look at Pinterest and stuff and do it within a month and understand composition and then break those compositional rules, which I talk about it, like I say in the video. And then of course I say, join a membership group. Why not? It's awesome. <laughs> and then uh, try new lenses will also help you break out of, you know, your creative ideas, you know, you'll see different perspectives, which is really awesome. Um, then, you know, so when something creativity, like say if you're walking, you're like, Oh God, that would be a great shot. Grab your phone or something that can actually, where you could write down the ideas that are hitting in your mind at that time. So you don't lose it. I lose things all the time. So I like to draw stuff on my notes and so if you see something that you're like, oh my gosh, this is so cool, write it on a notepad or put it in your phone. Um, and then also don't be, well, this is the thing that I think you should be for a little bit. Uh, well, let me tell you, go in, see some photographers like I'm showing you, go in and shoot like them, but don't compare yourself to them because they've been doing this 
for a long time. So I don't want you to get flustered and say, oh, I suck. This is horrible. I can't do this anymore. So don't be a compare, compare slogger. That's from Marie Forleo. She, I love that when I heard from her saying that. And it's really about don't just say, oh, I, I'm not a good photographer because I can't do that. No, 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 no. This is just go out there and try new things. Of course, you don't want to be a copycat. Once you get it down, then you need to push forward. But always check out other things. And that's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to show this person, which I don't know, for some reason, Instagram, I pulled out Instagram, but I found this person and I thought he was so cool. So what he does is he, for some reason, his stream is not working. Um, he is a professional toy photographer. So that's kind of fun when you're indoors, grab some toys, go to the dollar store if you don't have kids or anything like that. And I mean, for years, I never had toys, but see how he grabs things and he just plays with it and shoots and plays with post-processing. So these are some ideas that this person has done. And as you guys know that every single time I actually share a link, then it will be down below this video. So I mean, it's really cool. Look at the Flintstones. So you could get inspired by just checking this out or even maybe throwing some rocks up or who knows what you want. You know, it's just, I think it's so much fun to see uh, toys and shots with little goodies within it, uh, the, you know, composition. So another one is Harold Ross. He was on the show. And what's awesome about Harold is that he has, uh, he paints with light. And a lot of his work is close up, not macro, but you can still paint with light with macro. You can play with it. So look on, let me see, he's on show 22. So check out his show 22. He talks about it. We really get into detail on um, his inspiration and what he does. So that's something that he does always in the home. So definitely check out Harold Ross. I think he will give you some inspiration on things to play with within the home. And then another person that um, I want to share is Don. And Don Kamarachka was in on the show also. And this is a time frame when he really dives into snowflakes and ice bubbles and stuff like that. And he's on show 16. So I think that you should definitely check out his uh Definitely a show because we show a lot of different macro work that he does. But right now he's right in the middle of, you'll see some new things from Dawn because it's obviously winter here in the Northern Hemisphere. And it's really cool to see what he comes up with. So definitely think about doing something like this. And he tells you, he has a book, he tells you how to do it. He, it's a lot of work, but who knows, you might want to try it out. Glow for Christmas cactus. I didn't even see this. So it's a 62 shot focus stack. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. <laughs> I didn't even oh, like that. Oh, I'm not logged in. I was going to like that. Oh, well. And then uh, I'll share you my stuff real quick. I just put this up right now. And I was thinking, shoot some uh, fruit or vegetables and backlight it. I have a video that I'll share down below that how I did this. That would be a lot of fun. Uh, take anything and just, this is playing with light and flowers and get the flowers at the store. And so I also do, um, it's called macro lens painting. And some of you guys know about this. Uh, I was uh, featured in uh, popular photography for this. And it's all you do is you shoot the, you take your macro lens and you let it sit there just at the subject for say maybe two seconds, but you let the shutter speed go for at least three and you've got to compensate for your exposure. But once you get it, you get this, you start painting with your lens and it's so much fun and it's a blast. And I think you guys would have a lot of fun. You don't have to just do flowers. I love flowers. You can paint with your lens, whatever you want, you know, whatever floats your boat, just get something colorful. And then this is uh, glycerin. So I did a refraction. So refractions are really fun to do inside. This is paper underneath and I refracted this with glycerin. Now this is a stacked image and for, you know, I guess we can't get up close when it comes to Instagram. So that was my bad, but this is focused all the way from the top to the bottom and I got really close to it and it's a pretty big piece to tell you the truth, but it's really cool. Um, to see the refraction. So definitely try refraction, uh, getting something cool in the background. 
And then, oh, this is uh, this is an image that this is called Flood down below. So you could take whatever you want, and there's a plug-in, and I have a 20-minute video on Flood, and it's so much fun just to play with. It's just to get yourself out of the slump. So I'll have that video down below, and it's called Flood, and it's really cheap. It's like I don't know, 20 bucks, maybe something. Not I think maybe even less than that. And you could just play with it and just give yourself something to do and while the objects that you like to photograph or the subjects are not around. So that's a real cool thing to play with. And then this is soap. So water and soap is good. Oil and soap. Uh, I mean, oil and soap. Oil and water. That's really fun. Uh, you should. This is actually backlit. So you know, with some gels, which I'll share with you guys. Uh, some, I gave you a little teaser. We got some in the equipment area. I love to use gels and I think you guys would like to use, you know, it's good to play with color when you play with macro, especially when it comes to soap and uh, oil and all that kind of stuff. So I think that's it for now. This is another macro lens painting. Then this is the last person and Becky is going to totally love this because Becky turned me on to this lady. I had no idea about her. And we I want you to see her work. It's a lot like Harold Ross, but this is what I'm but she does it differently. So we are going to hear about this person. Let me make sure. I want to Oh, you know what? Becky writes about her and she says everybody should check her out in Google. So you see MKF photography, but she has all she has some beautiful. I'm going to ask her to be on the show uh, for sure. I got to wait a couple months, though, because I have a flower photographer coming in January. But look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? And so she does that inside the home. And I think these are mushrooms. I can't. I'm pretty sure they are. But look at that. So that's another we're going to talk about this person's technique and I'm going to share some uh, boxes and all kinds of stuff. So I just wanted to share that. So thank you so much, Becky. Totally appreciate you turning me on. I love it when you guys share photographers that you see and that you're emulating and, and wanting to learn. This is a beautiful magnolia. But um, so that is, let's go ahead and go back to me. That is what I wanted to share with you guys when it comes to a variety of things that you can do inside the home. And I know that uh, it can be, you know, you could put something in front of you and you try to photograph it and you're like, oh, this is so frustrating. But I think that if you, you know, check, come back to this video again and watch the, you know, just look at the people that the links down below, it might inspire you to try something different. And I'd love for you to share in the chat or share down below in the comments if you come back what you've done. And I would love to share the link because I would love to see what you've played with. It's a lot of fun looking at uh, your images. So here's, oh, Catherine, hello. So I got to see in the chat who's here. Catherine's here. Lee Smith, hello. Nice to see you. Very nice. I'm so excited that you guys are here. I'm not talking to myself. <laughs> this is great. So let me get out of this because, oh my gosh, we're going right into critique time. Again, I want to remind you guys, you know, if it wasn't for you sending the images to me in Facebook or on my website, the show would be so boring for me because that's one of the things that I really do love is to see your work and it's hard to, I know it's hard to put an image out, especially to be critiqued and then to know that it's going to be out on the internet. But if you do that, you're going to get help. You, you're going to get help from me. You're going to get help from others or it's, you're going to think of things differently. And another thing, you can take or leave what I say. But when I, I really am trying to help you think beyond where you obviously brought it in because you have a question. You want to maybe expand on what you're photographing or that image itself was just kind of something was bugging you about it and you just want a ne second set of eyes. And that's what I'm here for. And I've always loved to give suggestions. I will never just say, 
that's the almighty image and uh, you're just done. And it's because a, crit a critique is, is not about that. It's not about ripping your image up. It's about pushing you to think even farther of what you can do with your work. So even though you're sharing the one image, which I totally appreciate, what I do here is try to think beyond that of what you can do in the future. So I actually do talk to, we have Becky and John here, and I actually, even though you all are watching, which is awesome, I actually talk to you guys individually. Now, John said he's working. He can't make it live, which is fine. Hi, John. You're watching the replay. <laughs> but I will talk to Becky and I will talk to John. So I would love for you guys to definitely uh, share your work. And don't be shy. Just do it. It's so much fun. It really is. So what I'll do is I'm going to let me make sure I get up to Lightroom. And I'm, I have to make sure that I don't touch anything else. Okay, so go ahead. We can share my screen. Yep, AD's <laughs> on it, man. I'm telling you, we are on it today. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Okay. Oh, 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 I see it. Yeah. Okay. So that so AD just told me for some reason Skype is blowing the. It's actually ruining the color of the image too. Mm. So this is what's happening. Skype is giving us problems. See, we thought we were gonna have a perfect show. Oh well, <laughs> but you can kind of just look beyond the Skype issues that you see right now. Cause right now I'm looking at it. You can see there's a little line right in here and that's is frustrating for all of you that can't see what I see. I see a beautiful, vibrant, gorgeous red rose that I just, they're just beautiful. This is from Becky now. And Becky and I know what it looks like. So you guys just take it with a grain of salt here, but you can kind of see it. <laughs> you can kind of see it. Um, yeah, you know, thanks, Lee. He says it looks good through YouTube. But you know what? If you were to really see it, you would be like, whoa. Because she has done a great job with uh, this. Um, she was emulating. the. Let me read this. So then I can really tell you detailed what Becky was doing. So this is what I love too. She's, she writes so good too. So I've been experimenting with making flower images indoors as the weather here in Georgia sucks <laughs> right now. I love it. Yeah, she, she says it sucks right now. And I've been in sort of a creative slump. And I think it's that weather, Becky. I just think it's the weather too. It just kind of brings you down a little bit, you know? So Anyway, she says, so while I do not have a studio, I do have a kitchen table with nice big windows. I learned new technique. Oh, she learned a new technique from Melanie. This is her name now. Melanie Kern Favilla or Favia, uh, where she uses available light from a window to create stunning and dramatic flower images. Her background is a box lined with black velvet. The subject is placed in front of the box or just inside the box. Lighting is accomplished using natural light coming in through a window. The light is modified with various diffusing materials ranging from uh, backing paper to sheer curtains and packaging materials. White cards are used to reflect light and black cards are, can be used to block the light. In my case, I constructed my box with materials I had on hand, and I'm still experimenting with the best materials. The box is placed in my kitchen table, and the window is behind the kitchen table. My Nikon D7100, oh, she shot this with her Nikon D7100, Tokina 100mm 2.8 macro lens, and is mounted on a tripod. The flower was a tiny rose that had fallen off an arrangement, but was so pretty, I wanted to see what I could do with it. The stem was really not long enough to place in a vase. So I used a small base um, that was covered with black material. I do not have any velvet yet. She says, uh, and she placed the rose on the base of the very, uh, in various positions. The light wraps around the box and spills onto the flower. This image 
was from her camera that was set on F16 four seconds and her ISO was 100. Hold on one sec. Let's get this. She goes, I wanted the light to be soft as I could make it with enough shadows to give the flower depth and dimension. I next took the image into Lightroom and in the basic panel, bumped up the exposure slightly, brought up the white slider and increased the clarity. I played with the sliders in the tone curve panel and increased the contrast. And that's what you guys can't really see right now, to tell you the truth. But it's just gorgeous. Um, that's really the only thing that was done in post-processing. I think the one thing that would really make the image better would be to use some black plexiglass. And I plan to add that to the mix next time I make some flower images. I love this technique. And although my images are not even close to what Melanie can do, I'm happy with the results and even happier that it can be done with a very inexpensive inexpensive <laughs> materials and minimal equipment. I would encourage folks to Google her, and yes, they will get that link down below, and go to her website to see what she does. Her images are stunning. Yes, they are. She says, Janice, thank you again for providing a wonderful platform for macro photographers. I learned so much and believe your show. Uh, I learned so much and believe your show and the things I have learned have greatly improved my images. Looking forward to the show Thursday. Thank you so much, Becky. That's awesome. You are so welcome, and it's a pleasure to have you on the show. And it's always a pleasure that you are there chatting with me. So thank you. Um, yeah, so here is your image. And I, I absolutely love it. You did a great job. I'm going to move some stuff around like I always do. Let's see if I can, uh, one of the things that I, I really do, <laughs> I always suggest make sure you use a Wacom. Is it Wacom or Wacom AD? I never know what it, what it is. Wacom or? <laughs> it says whatever I want to call it. Oh, we'll just call it Wacom today. Maybe tomorrow it'll be Wacom. <laughs> so, no, I'll say Wacom because I, my mind is, uh, I might wack. <laughs> yeah, it depends on how bad your kids are. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh my gosh, for sure. Okay, so then because you guys can't see, there. Now you could see better the image, even though we have the black lines around it. Um, this right here is her image. And the flower is absolutely gorgeous. So we're going to get in a little close here. So you guys can see how pretty it is. It's very elegant and soft and beautiful. So what I did, Becky, is I went ahead and I, you know, I checked out the site because I wanted to see who you were talking about because I never had heard about her. And so um, I noticed that she has, I, I think that what she's done is you've done exactly what she's done with make it real soft you know it is a she's using the sun which is a light source that is very far away and it disperse so you know we always got to think about our light so whether it's light from the sun light from a strobe light from you know whatever you're using how is it dispersing on the uh, image or the actual composition and the structure that you want to get. And she wants it very soft and elegant. And it is very pretty. And it, I think you've done a great job. I think what ha I think there's there's something that you could use here, and I'm going to share it in the equipment, that will help you when it comes to uh, photographing the stem. So every all the light came out really pretty, but the stem didn't get very much light. So it's kind of underexposed. And this is this is interesting how you left the one. Uh, I like that that leaf. The what I like about it is just kind of an extension. But I think I would change. Now this is personal, okay? I would change the composition. So let me get over and just go into my develop module. And I, oh, actually, I, I think I would change it this way. Hold on one second. I'm in the library, and you guys can't see all that behind the scenes. I might have to share with you some of that. 
Um, but let's get, let's move this. Where are you? Come on. My computer is like going real slow. And I'm not even the one doing everything. So let's get out of the fill. I wanted to ask you, Becky, do you have a, a calibre? Do you calibrate your monitor? That's one thing I do want to ask. Okay, so here's her image so you can see it. Now, let's see if the computer, yeah, there we go. So, so let's just flip it around. Just look at, this is what I like to do. I like to flip things around. This is the way it was shot. But I personally like that. And I think it's just because it's an extension that comes through. That's really pretty. I like that. But I, there's a lot of black. But let me see what she says. Uh, I am delayed about 20 th seconds to there's my uh, the kids are home. This is so funny. It always happens in the middle of the show. The dogs start barking. And I didn't get to show you Coco. I wanted to show you guys Coco. Anyway, so I, um, I want to share with you a crop. So here's a crop, and it's her image, but it's cropped. So you could see what a difference that is by just flipping it and cropping it and getting up close. And now it's in my face, and now it's very elegant. So one of the things, yes, your monitor is calibrated. Okay, okay, awesome. So what I, the reason why I was asking is because when I get up close, let's get over to yours, is that I could see, and it may, I, you were saying that you don't have velvet. So let me get out of, I have to put it in loop because I could see the black. See this right here? So if you're going to print this, because this is beautiful, this is a gorgeous flower. I have a couple other techniques that I can help you with that, you know, just give you some ideas. But you might want to blacken this all out because if you print this, we're going to be able to see this. So you guys know that when I go into critique, I really get into to, uh, details because I want to help you. So I think it's a beautiful flower. I would clean up some of this, but your lighting is very pretty and it's nice. And I, I think... This is something that you could definitely share off to the world. I think also because this right here, you can see that it's underexposed. I cropped it out. That's what you, let me go into fit. I cropped it out because it was, it's out. Well, I didn't crop all of it, but I probably would even darken it just a little bit because it's, it's uh, underexposed. So it's getting a little bit of noise unless you want to, color it out. See on the edges, you could play with that too, if you want Becky, but I think the flower, we're going right to the flower. So it's all good there. I would just, I, I noticed that hers, um, I would definitely take a little bit of time to just clean some of this stuff up and it's just, it's gorgeous. And I would just make sure, cause hers were very detailed and cleaned up. I noticed that. And I could see why, because you really don't want to be distracted by any, you just want to go to the flower. You don't want to be looking at the lines and then boom, see, you know, the, that. So that's something for sure to do. Now, I have another thing that I want to share with you, and I'm going to share this with you. So see how this is totally blown out? The reason why I want to share this with you is that when you take the slider and you take the exposure all the way to the right, right now what we're doing is we're seeing all the highlights. And I'm taking the exposure, which is the middle, uh, you know, if you don't do the highlights, don't push the highlights up or anything like that. We're taking the exposure itself. So with the midtones, everything just going to go and blow out. And the reason why I wanted to share this with you, Becky, is that you can see here all of the areas that really have light to them. See all in here. And this is a good way to dodge and burn when you're first starting out. And I feel like she has a lot of goodies that she's using to manipulate the light, but you can do this also by dodging and burning with the image that you got. So here is the, the image that you got. And then I dodged and burned. Here's the dodge and burn. And Becky, if you, if you don't understand that, let me, so here's the before. Look right in here and in here. And then here is the burn. So basically, I took 
in Lightroom and I just did it really fast. And I noticed that with hers that she has, I used the adjustment brush and then I took the exposure. I didn't do shadows, highlights, whites, blacks. I just took the the exposure and bumped it up. Let me see how where it went. I can't remember where how much, but I would just play with it, and you can always tone it down. If you want me to show you, I can do this in Lightroom. You just tell me while I get a glass of water, because <laughs> I'll just drag it over. If you want me to show you what I did, that's no problem. But I think what she does is she, you know, has that. But if you look at her work, it is very, you know, has a lot of different contrast. So it's very lights and darks and very elegant. And she she definitely shoots. There's some side lighting because that's where you can see the texture, which I really love. You can use um, texture uh, by you could see the texture by doing side light on your uh, main subject. So I haven't, Becky hasn't said anything yet, but Becky, if you want me to do that, I will. Cause what I'm going to do now, so this is again, just to me, it's just a little bit more powerful and then just bringing out a little bit dodging and burning. I think that to me, and, and it's just gorgeous. I'm sorry that you guys all can't see it, but it's a beautiful job. You did a great, you did a really good piece. So we're going to go ahead and go to John. And again, uh, Becky, if you do tell me that you want me to, you know, show you in Lightroom, I could do that. So here's John's. And this is what John says. This is a shot I took back around the end of October. Honestly, I was just taking the dog out in the backyard to pee and decided to take my camera with me. I love you guys. <laughs> I start laughing, but I, I can't read because I start laughing about how you, I just love how you guys, you guys are great people. Anyways, I had no intentions of anything specific to shoot. I saw this dirty old home uh, depot bucket in the yard, in his yard. So he saw a dirty, oh, he saw it was a home depot bucket. Okay. He saw a dirty old home depot bucket in the yard and on on the lid was a puddle of dirty water and some dried up leaves floating around. So I stood over it and looked straight down. And the first thing that popped into my head was a perfect representation of fall in New England. The dirty orange bucket. I felt like I was going to sneeze. So I'm rubbing my nose. <laughs> uh, the dirty orange bucket as a oh so he used the dirty orange bucket as a backdrop seemed to bring it all together yes yes so that's the yellows that you guys see uh in the background in here so that's a dirty old depot bucket wow i didn't that's pretty cool this was taken with my nikon d3400 tokina 100 millimeter macro lens and ambient light he shot it with his at uh one 200th of a second. His ISO was 400 and it was at F.56. I added some clarity and tweaked the contrast and, ex and the exposure a little in Lightroom to try and make the leaves pop out a little more. And then one of the things that he also said was um, that the photo was shared by a couple macro um, pages on Instagram. So I'm curious to get some feedback on it. It was an unplanned random thought when I took it, but it meant something to me, uh, when I edit it, I'm a huge October fan. So once I saw my finished edit, I was pretty happy and it's not my usual insects and spiders. So it was different. It was a different kind of macro feeling for me. And that is so perfect because I just love that because we get stuck. This is how, why we have problems when we are like lose our creativity because we do the same thing. We do the same thing. And he just got excited by shooting this awesome leaves in the favorite time of year that he loves in October. I mean, that is 
a great feeling. And we know as photographers, when you get something like this, you're just like, wow, that's, uh, it's exciting. And that's what I hope for all of you guys. And we all go through the creative slumps. That's how I actually met AD because I was in a creative slump. <laughs> And you know what? It's just like you just move forward and just go with it. So, John, this is cool. And I really um, am glad that you brought this in. So people are sharing this because what's really cool is it's macro. Hello, it's macro. That's why uh, you look at you can see we'll get up close. Let's go to Phil first. And you could see the refractions from the leaves. And that's what's so cool it, it's it's kind of like a magnifying glass. And right in here, I can see the trees that is behind. You know, it's actually even showing like a glare, but it's cool. It looks good. And uh, that's why I think people are attracted to it because we don't normally see this with our eyes and the water drops are even bring it closer to us and we can um, enjoy the dead leaves. And the colors are always really pretty at this time of year too. So I think that's, one of the reasons why people are, are digging on it for sure. And well, I mean, water drops is very comforting. So you like it and you, so I, I could give you my opinion, but before I do that, if you like it, then that's what it's all about. Not what I say is, is what I like. If you're liking your work, then kudos to you and be happy and just go with it. People are sharing it with it. Now, if you want to, you, you're going to, you put it in for critique. So I'm going to tell you what I think. And I totally love it. One thing I want you to do, John, is when you see something like this. So you shot it at 5.6. What I recommend you do, and it's hard because you're just like, oh, wow, off the spur. I want you always to think about um, stacking your images, and you don't have to stack, but get the information in your camera. What I mean by that is it's nice and sharp here, and a leaf goes up, and wherever you're shooting, it's going to change your you know, you got shallow depth of field. We're getting up close. That's one of our main issues as macro photographers, the shallow depth of field. So I think this would be cool if you had this nice and sharp and this nice and sharp. See how you can see that it's getting kind of blurry over here? Now, this is still, like I said, a cool shot. But next time you go out and you see something, list, I want my little voice in your brain <laughs> saying, Janice wants you to go ahead and take the shot on one side and then take more shots to get more in focus and you can dump this is what's so cool we're not in film anymore you could just dump the image you don't have to use it if you don't want to but i think what would have been fun with this is to get all of the water drops you've got a lot of these in focus and then grab these in focus okay so then i have one more suggestion when i this is my thing when i work on my images so these are the main subjects. I always look at the negative space. So that's the yellow that's behind here. That's this leaf that's right in here. That's really negative space because it's really not a prominent part of the story. It's kind of off to the side. I feel like these are the prominent, um, you know, what you want us to see, which we do. I mean, we would definitely go and look at that. So let me, let me see what I could do here. Let me go over here and let me flip it. Let me get out of develop. And I play with this just a little bit. And the only thing I did was crop it. Let's see. So let's go this way. And let's go in. And I'm going to, I'll tell you why. So right now, see how the leaf goes off to kind of like a triangle. And I like that each leaf is different. So this one's going one way and then this is going the other way when it comes to the uh, veins or whatever they're called you know in here that looks really cool so now i'm i'm not looking at i'm looking at the negative space while i do this and i'm gonna go ahead and develop and i'm gonna do the crop and i'm gonna look at that and i'm gonna see what floats my boat so i'm going to let's see right here let me look at the negative space Hold on one second. 
And let's go right there. I have already, I'm just trying to emulate what I had cropped to before. So let me see if that's cool. That's pretty close. Let me go over here. I moved it a little bit. So the reason why I like this now is because I got a lot of this in folk, the, all the focus of the water drops. But I also find, which is really cool, is the yellows. And you can even bring that out more in, um, in post-processing. But this right here, now it has the triangle, it has the triangle, and it has the triangle. So do you, I don't know if you see, there's a little bit of a pattern going there. So I think it was, I think for me, I like this a lot better. I'm going to pull up some vibrancy and you guys can't see it as much as I can. Let me just push it up because I'm looking on my laptop over here and it looks dull. And I'm telling you, man, it's beautiful. It has all these fall colors, green. Um, let me try saturation. It's looking like crap on my screen, but maybe on yours, it'll be okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm really pushing the colors on my screen because I'm trying to see if you guys could see it better, but maybe, who knows? Let's just go with that. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay. So AD saying the stream is good. So now you guys, okay, that's awesome. Cause then you guys can enjoy it. Uh, but th this is what, this is what I like. I mean, I just, so right now that's cool. Cause we get to see the, 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 all the, you know, refraction, we get to see it. It's a real cool shot. And now it's like, bam, and now it's a story. It has really has the leaves. You've got the background the, the with, you know, the negative space enhancing that the the main focal point that you want us to look at so that's just an idea for you to think about the focal point and um and the negative space and then also of course later on i'd like for you to stack but it's a it's really cool and you can totally see why people would love to uh you know that want to share this let me see let's see what becky says um La, 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 la. Uh, let's see. Thank you so much, Janice, for your help and suggestions. Very helpful. Okay, so she's okay. My post-processing is not as good as I would like it to be. She says, you know what? It's okay because it's always a learning experience, and that's why you keep doing it. So that's cool. Do you, um, Becky, you're in my membership program, so I'm going to share with you uh, some dodging and burning because I got to get on. It's 546, and we got to go jamming with, Fun equipment time. <laughs> Let me get out of this. Okay, AD, let's go back to me. There we go. And yes. I'm sitting there chatting. This, I'm telling you, I have so much fun talking about you guys' images. It was only two, you know, but it can help everybody, don't you think? The things that we talk about here can just really go for it and help with everyone. So, um, John and Becky, thank you so much. I totally appreciate it. And now it's fun time. It's equipment time. It's the holidays. I had to show equipment for the holidays. So Becky, this, I thought about you and I think you might've seen it in one of my workshops. So this is called a plamp. See, and it attaches, you could attach it to your uh, table. It's really cheap. I mean, you know, it's, it's worth the money. So save your money. I can't remember exactly what, but I'll put the link down below. Um, and see, I got a little teeny flower. It's like, it's a dead flower that I was photographing, but see how it holds it. And it is so awesome. You could use this outside or you could put it around your tripod. It's, it's really cool. So this is a great Christmas gift. If you don't have one, tell your family and friends. <laughs> you got to get it. And then here is another one. And I'm actually going to share with you guys uh, a better one than this. But see how small it is? I wanted to share with you this. I did an unboxing for this, and it almost whacked me in the face because it's so small. I'm used to bigger reflectors. So let me just push this out. It pops up really fast. <laughs> I, could sure, I could hold it, but see, this is awesome. Because it 
has the gold if you want. It has the white, but it's small. So you could take it. It's perfect for macro photographers. It's so easy. I love this. I take this outside. I use it indoors. This is also a really good Christmas gift. It's not very expensive because, you know, you you know, if you want to tell people to give you something or you want to buy something for somebody, um, this is really, really good for us macro photographers. And it just slips in so easy. The one I'm gonna share with you is a five to one and I'm gonna show you that right now. But let me just put this back, because this is awesome. All right, now let me make sure I got that up. I wanna, let's see, is it this one? Oh yeah, let me uh, get over to the five to one. And is it this one? No. This is it. Okay, let's share the screen. Awesome. Okay, so here's the five to one. And this one's better. See, and it's only $14.99. You know, just, it's so awesome. It's such a great stocking stuffer. And so you have the gold and the white and the silver. So it just flips, the background just flips. You just flip it around and you can have everything. And it's so small. I just love that. So that's a great buy. This is something that I found that I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. It's portable. So this is a box and see how small it is because we're macro photographers. We don't need these big, big boxes or anything, but it lights up. There's a video on how to use it. But what I like about it is that you can take it with you. It's not like something that's, it's really easy and compact and it's just like, a, you know, carrying a suitcase. It's really Let's see if they show that. Oh, in the video, they show how easy and thin it is. So I thought that was really cool if you want to bring this with you if you're going somewhere and you need a light box. Um, you never know. You might want to bring something in. So, you know, they always show products for this stuff, but we don't need products. You can use other stuff. You think of, you know, just think. It's funny because we're going to share next. Let me get out of that. And no, not that one. Hold on. So here's Luminar. This is great. So coming in December uh, 18th, you got to check out Luminar. I'm going to put it down below. And you, this is a great, I love all of the products here, Aurora and Luminar. But what is nice about this is that it gives you ideas and I did a webinar on post-processing and like, look, they're showing landscape. We, it's okay. Don't think just because it's made for landscape, it's not made for landscape. It really does have a lot of tools. Let me get up and stop making you guys dizzy. So look at how you just click things and you can play with sun rays in your macro. It does. This is just going beyond what it's made for, but you'd be surprised what you could do. And the offer ends like it's on sale right now. And I'll put the link down below. And I'm serious. I don't, I'm not, this is something I have. So it just is a great tool to help you look at your images in a different way. And you might like the way the sky is and who, you know, and then change up the foreground. It's just a really, it's reasonable too. And it's, it's a good I think it's a good thing for you guys to have it for software. I think it will enhance. Oh, we'll do a demonstration on the 20th. Yay! That's right. And, and, it's a, and it's free update for all of you that have Luminar now. So if you already have Luminar, then you get a free update, which is even better. So yes. That's going to be fun on the 20th. Woohoo. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> AD, you're awesome. Okay. Now this, these two things right now I want to share with you. They are not, they're Mac and they, so PC, I'm really sorry, but I want to share stuff that I feel that is very important. It's great for Christmas. So this is really cheap. I love this. It's called clean my Mac 10. And I, if you're like me, it slows down your computer, all the crap that's in there. I'm telling you, this is such a great gift for yourself or, you know, if you, anybody that has a mess with their Mac, it is unbelievable. It keeps my Mac going, running great. And then another thing that is I use this and then I use this Gemini 2 and what it does is it deletes duplicate files, but I have to say you have to be very careful with your photography because if you have not given 
you've just thrown your images in and they have the same numbers or whatever, and you have thousands like me, you could delete your images. So you need to be careful with that, but it's still good to have. I really like it when it comes to other stuff that I have on my computer. And sometimes, yeah, I'll duplicate the images, but I'll know in my mind, it's the same image. It's the same. Oops. It, I saved it in a different spot. It cleans up your, um, Mac. It's just awesome. And I am going to do two videos, one on this and the one, and then the other one, um, you know, I'll do Gemini and then I'll do the clean up and I'm going to do two videos to share with you guys how to use it because I feel it's so important. We need to take care of our systems too when as photographers. So I wanted to share those two are very important what I love to to do and and it does help a lot. Especially if you're not techie like me. I'm not a techie person. So another thing I found that was really cool that I think it's a great Christmas gift. It's a Wacom tablet, but it's a small one. So you could take it because like I do, you know, we go out and we do hiking and traveling and stuff. And if you're out there and want to do it, you know, a little small tablet. See, I have a big, I have a medium sized tablet. So let me see if I, I could share it with you guys. So here's my medium tablet. And the thing with this, it's like really small and you could come put it with your computer or you could do it with your phone. It's Bluetooth. It's really, really cool. I don't have this, but I'm like, Ooh, that's a nice Christmas gift. <laughs> do I need it? No. Do I want it? Yes. <laughs> and then the last thing that I want to share with you guys, and you don't have to do, this is something I really feel that macro photographers should play with. You don't have to, this is to get you out of your creative slump. And it's so much fun to add gels. Now this is showing on a strobe flash, but you can have, they just make them in squares. You can put them on your flashlights. You could do so. And it's just to bring out, I think when you just start playing with creativity and seeing your stuff differently, even if you don't like it, you'll think about other things to photograph or a different way. Um, it's just fun to try new things and don't be so serious when you're in a creative slump, just shoot and shoot. And it's okay because, uh, we all get that way. And then all of a sudden something will trigger and you're like, Oh yeah, this is so cool. So I'm just trying to give you, um, Oh, I found this too. This is really cool. So if this is something that, uh, you know, if you're using the if you don't have the big strobes and if you need a little light, this curves with it and it curves with your light. So that's really cool to have too. And I think that's 40 bucks. I can't remember how much that, yeah, 39 95. So it's a flash bender. It's really cool. So I think that's pretty good. We'll go back to me. Did I, I don't, I think that's everything. And I did really good because it's, it's the end of the show. Do you guys have any questions or anything like that for me? Thank you so much, Janice, for suggesting. Oh, they, you're welcome, Becky. Let's see. Okay. Mm. All righty. This is so cool. So I do want to remind you that, let me get to the reminders. So December 20th is our next show, and we're having a holiday special, and we're going to show Luminar. Yes. I'm telling you, it's so much fun. It's so creative. It's, it's going to make you get out of that creative slump. <laughs> And then I really, really want you guys to photograph some uh, holiday stuff so me and AD can go. You're going to get a double. So me and AD can go through your images and, and share the close-up, the macro, and the micro holiday. So do some, say, uh, you know, Boca or circles of confusion type stuff or lights or something, something like this or your ornaments or whatever, you know, it's just anything that you could see that's, that's holiday, but get up close with your lens and share that in the Facebook group, which it will be down below or on my website. And I would love to see all of the actual images. It would be so cool for you guys to play with that. And, oh, real quick, let's just show my get to know me what, um, video in case to you guys get don't know, to know us in more detail, check out sullivanjphotography.com. And while you're at it, sign up for challenges, deep dive photography information, and free textures by just filling out your email and your name 
and pushing that grab your first challenge. If you'd like to even dive deeper into your photography and really elevate it, check out membership.sullivanjphotography.com. This is a membership that's only $29 a month, and we give you everything that's needed to really push your macro and landscape photography. Hope to see you there. So if you like the show, give me a thumbs up, you guys, and share it, please. We want to get more chatters up here, this macro chatters. Also, comment down below. The comments do get YouTube to say, hey, this was uh, something that people liked. So give me a comment down below. I will comment back to you. And let's get the macro chatters out there to come on in and join the fun. It was so great to see you guys. I have your, I love that you're chatting. That really just makes me feel so good when I see you guys. Thank you, Catherine. Great show. Oh my gosh, you're so awesome. Yes, so very, very cool. Thank you so much for being here, you guys. And just remember that a thousand words does make a difference. So get up and close, get up and close with your subjects. Let me see if I can spit this out. Let me try it again. Get up close and personal with your subject and share your thousand words. I said it. Yay. All right. Join us in two weeks, you guys. I'll see you soon. Have a good evening, day or night. Cheers.